Okay, good news so far. All right, everything looks good. No dropped frames on OBS, and the video feed is coming through on DLive. So, right on. I think we're we're good to go. All right, and uh, welcome to this uh, the special live episode of the Vani Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state uh, and the servile society. Uh, I'm your host Shane, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia, uh, the Self Liberator's Paradise, Pasnia.com. Uh, of course, this will be tossed up at vanupodcast.com uh, on the podcast feed and as a video, uh, as well as uh, our bit shoot, uh, LBRY, and uh, float accounts. Uh, but to those live here on uh, DLive, which I'm not sure if anyone is yet, um, but uh, good day and uh, welcome. Uh, it's uh, first time streaming here, um, or I guess as I was talking to uh, my guest before before the stream, was, I've, I've streamed on DLive a few years ago, but uh, that was before, that was probably like two iterations of the website. Um, two different, uh, yeah, two completely different, uh, I guess, blockchains and such. So I don't know. This, I, uh, this is essentially the first time. Essentially the first time. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm making a uh, concerted effort to, uh, um, to, to yeah, cut ties to, uh, you know, as the the title of the stream, you know, cutting first realm ties. Um, working, uh, working hard on doing that. Um, so uh, looking for alternatives to fascist tube. And uh, yeah, here we are uh, on D Live, and uh, everything looks to be uh, to to be working well so far. Um, and I actually did a uh, kill fascist book, uh, uh, my, my fascist book account a couple of weeks ago, um, to officially begin the process. And I do recommend it. I was thinking about it. Um, I've, I'd had a, uh, an account cause obviously they had to tell me how long I had, I'd, I had, I'd had an account and I'd, I didn't think about it, but it was, I've had it for, it was like 14 years. Um, so like with it, so I've, I've had it for one year, like it's, I've been, so basically I've had it for just as long as I hadn't had it, um, 50% of my life. So it was like, uh. Um, it's crazy, crazy, strange thing. But uh, um, the so-called smartphone is next. Uh, I've I've I downgraded to a uh, to a, a tablet, um, and I'll put uh, I'll try to try to do something cool, um, something open source on that. But uh, maybe maybe here soon. Uh, I can most I can uh, live mostly on second realm money, uh, like my special guest today, Max Hillebrand. Uh, you might remember him from uh, TVP fifty nine. Uh, the title of that was the proliferation of Bitcoin privacy and security tools. Or uh, the Vani podcast number sixty four, living on Bitcoin, um, Max's unbanking journey. Uh, those can be found at uh, be found at vanipodcast dot com forward slash fifty nine and vanipodcast dot com slash sixty four respectively. So uh, yeah, I figured it was time to uh, like to time to do a live stream or do do some sort of content again because it's been a while for TVP. And also, I figured it was time to uh, to bring him back on here uh, to get an update on uh, the Bitcoin uh, the Bitcoin world. He does a lot of work with uh, with the Sabi wallet. Um, his adventures as a uh, van nomad. Which we've uh, we've uh, which, which he's talked about on this on this podcast a couple of times, but we'll get uh, an update on that and uh, your questions and uh, yeah whatever else uh, whatever else whatever else we get to. So um, as I told him, I just want to kind of hit record and see what happens. So Max, without further ado, man, uh, welcome back to uh, the Vani Podcast. Uh, how are you doing today? Well, Sean, thank you very much again for the invite. I'm I'm happy to be back for another third time. This is fantastic. Uh, you know, really, I've I discovered the Vano podcast quite a time ago, and you have been a, a substantial part in uh, me shaping my understanding of uh, well, liberty strategies, uh, specifically, of course, Vanu. Um, and it's it's been a pleasure going through all your archive and uh, also catching up with the recent episodes. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy to be back, and I'm doing fantastic just to have that good conversation with you. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's 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 great to hear. That's great. Uh, certainly, certainly great to hear. Um, and uh, I guess I should also mention that the the last time we talked, uh, there was one other time, uh, I guess, uh, uh, between uh, here and there, and that was uh, hacker. I guess the Hackers Congress, the digital event, uh, that I still have to get out on the podcast feed and out on. Um, I get. I still have to get that video out too. I've been slacking on that. Um, but uh, I, I guess yeah, we we could talk a little a little bit about that. Um, that uh, we 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 talked to uh, to smuggler and uh, some some other folks. Um, on uh, we had a pretty a pretty uh, decent. Uh, we I guess we we start out, start out the conversation talking about Vanu, and uh, then uh, yeah we got into talk talking about shipping containers, which is always a fun conversation. So I guess do you want to talk a little bit about uh, about that? Uh, I guess you because you, you 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 played a pretty big part in putting that together, right? Uh, well, the Hackers Congress is phenomenal, and probably most of your audience already know about the infamous, infamous HCPP at Prague. Uh, it was the seventh year, uh, 2020, so um, it's an ongoing, very high-quality crypto anarchy tribe gathering. Um, and yes, this year was cool. Um, I was involved um, a bit more than in other years, even. Um, 
so I've been doing live streams during the HCPP for the last three or four years now. Um, but this time really got crazy <laughs> uh, because uh, I, you know, the last years I did this with one or two co-hosts um, and we got like 40 hours over the weekend in of recording time. Um, uh, no, sorry, 30 hours. Uh, still decent, right? But we're right. exhausted afterward. <laughs> So, I mean, having great conversations is cool, but doing it in, like for 10 hours a day um, and then going out and party with the HCPP crew afterwards and beforehand, right? You're, you're going to be pretty done by the end of the weekend. I, I remember my voice was dead last year, completely gone. <laughs> so I wanted, to, I wanted to make it bigger and better, um, but without ruining myself completely. Uh, so how do I, you scale something? Right? You, you involve more monkeys. <laughs> right. and, and that's basically what I did. Um, uh, I, I reached out to... To a couple of the awesome uh, content creators and educators, um, you know, in in the liberation space. Um, uh, I, I was pretty Bitcoin focused uh, with the hosts, but um, there were multiple other people, including you, right, who have a, a more a broader freedom um, focus. I would say. Um, so we ended up doing a fifty-eight hour and thirty-minute nonstop live stream. Uh, which is kind of ridiculous. We really went from Friday uh, morning till Saturday evening, <laughs> uh, till Sunday evening. So it was it was a crazy event and really great, great, great conversations. You brought up that one with with Frank Brown and Smuggler it was phenomenal. Um, I can recommend another one hosted by Janine Romer um, and um, Frank Applebaum. Um, oh no, sorry, Jacob, Jacob Applebaum, uh, who is a good friend uh, of uh, Julian Assange, and who has been following the the um, that uh, the way that the digital totality has been trying to crush Julian Assange for the last many years, uh, and and the absolute tragedy that is happening here. Uh, and this this was supposed to be a one hour interview, um, but after listening into it, it was so phenomenal that I decided on the spot uh, to kill the next <laughs> the next slot in the live stream. Uh, and dedicate another full hour to this. Uh, so we ended up having a two-hour interview with ja with Jacob Applebaum, who, by the way, has been censored from every single public speaking engagement uh, for three or four years. Uh, this was the first time he was on a public stage. Uh, and probably one of the reasons is um, that we did not announce it. Uh, this was uh, all communicated via PGP encrypted e uh, emails uh, and negotiated in the time and place, uh, and then only well announced as we actually went live. Uh, so uh, we could avoid any type of harassment uh, in this setup. Uh, of course, also on our own self-hosted Jitsi server. Right. Uh, so uh, any type of harassment of the of the call itself would have been difficult. Though unfortunately, we were using YouTube for the live stream. Right. Right. Yeah, and uh, I, I certainly would recommend. Uh, I'll I'll make sure to drop links in the show notes to uh, to the full videos of that. I think there's I think there's eight 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 videos on uh, on the HCPP YouTube channel. Um, the uh, Fast Tube channel. I'll, I'll, I'll drop links in the show notes. Um, certainly, a lot of a uh, lot of great conversations there. I still haven't had a chance to catch up on all of them. There's so much. There's so much stuff to uh, to catch up on. Um, there's so much stuff to to, to catch. So, um, yeah, behind behind. Yeah, on, on, on right. Quite seriously. A bit. <laughs> Yeah. Seriously, seriously. Right, but, but you you mentioned shipping containers, and uh, that was a big right. part of, of our conversation with uh, Frank and Smuggle. Um And uh, actually, here um, in Parlani Bowl is as uh, has been happening another cool. Uh, well, advancement uh, of the uh, of this concept. Uh, there is now a farm just a couple minutes outside of Prague, um, uh, with hundreds of different crops planted, uh, chicken and swine um, as well. Uh, and this farm has a one shipping container, uh, which has been well manufactured at a decently low cost, I would say, uh, and is now housing a, a family of four. Um, so uh, uh, this has really been quite fun uh, to, uh, to you know, see how this container has been built out over these last couple months uh, and the, the, the techniques and ways to, to really build a shipping container right, and make it livable. Right? Uh, it, it was really, really interesting and fascinating to follow. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's great to hear. That is uh, really great to hear. I'm, I'll, I'll actually be, um, yeah, and that was very, very good timing on that conversation because that's, I, I'll i be, uh, this, I live in an old farmhouse. The the guy built it like 1970s with his, uh, he did everything. Um, obviously, his every, everyone did everything back then. Um, so yeah, he, he, he built everything. It's about time, about time to just tear the thing down. So, uh, you know, start over. Um, and uh, so yeah, I've been, I've been thinking about what I'm going to do. And, and I, I really like the shipping container idea. I really, really like it. Um, 
Yeah, it's it's uh, seriously. There's yeah. so many advantages to it, right? Um, I mean, you know, the obvious one: it's portable, right? It's potentially movable. Um, you can move it at a very cheap cost uh, at a very large scale. I mean, our entire our entire world is basically built to ship shipping containers and to get them from a to be right? we have a huge infrastructure and basically at any given day you can call a random logistics company um, to come with a crane and a truck uh, and and pick up your um, your six meter or 12 meter shipping container yeah deliver it to any place within hundreds of kilometers for a couple hundred bucks it's really ridiculous uh, so, so so just that aspect is, is so powerful um, you know just to de-escalate quickly to to exit the escalation spiral of aggression um, and when your neighbor is is uh, pissy that the music was too loud at the last party right you pack up your stuff and you take all your capital and you leave and you don't engage in a fight right so so that aspect of being potentially movable right to be, to have a portable capital specifically for your dwelling place um, is something that is really like a powerful tool to have in a Vanu strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And e even out here, um, I mean, uh, it's they're they're ubiquitous. They're everywhere. Like the the entire yeah the entire world is it rel relies upon these things. So even out here uh, in the middle of nowhere, Pasnias, uh, you know, so called Southern Illinois, as the U.S. The USSA would call it. Um, I mean, even out here within probably within an hour or two, like if I if I called a company and, uh, you know, probably pay like an expedited fee, expediting fee or whatever, I could probably get someone out here within a couple hours to move a shipping container. Like it's the, the same thing here, um, even out here in the middle of nowhere. So um, it's yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's I, I very much agree. That and you can and, and you know, there's, 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 there's so much there's so much flexibility too because like I, I've thought about um, if I have like you know a dozen you know a dozen lambs or something and I have to leave sometime like I don't want to just leave those behind right so like you, you think about you think about uh, also too like converting a storage container and uh, just putting it on a trailer and uh, you 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 take the animals with you too um, so like it, it wouldn't like the, I, I've, I've I've thought I've thought this through I've thought this through but um, I don't know that shipping containers no, seems like a good idea very much man I agree. You know, and to the point of getting it to in the middle of nowhere. So the first time I visited that Prague um, many months ago, um, I drove my truck. Uh, it was it was 4 a.m. Uh, because I just drove like 900 kilometers in one day. So I arrived in Prague in the middle of nowhere. And now this farm is really in the middle of nowhere, in like the heart of a small forest, basically, uh, multiple acres. Um, and so I was driving there, ditch road, you know, holes everywhere, uh, steep hills, muddy, I could barely make it, right? And so then I park in the middle of nowhere, not even sure if I'm on the property of the farm, right? And sleep because I'm just too tired. <laughs> Next morning, my friend wakes me up and I'm telling him, dude, you want to get a shipping container into this shithole? No way. No way. Right? Uh, a couple months later, you know, a, a 12, uh, a 12 meter, a 20 foot shipping container uh, gets pulled in with a rever like reversely driven uh, truck. <laughs> like eight wheels or something um no to like no problems whatsoever the thing went through um a, a crane came along just lifted it tilted was it was done in 30 minutes right <laughs> uh, and the container yeah. was standing on the foundation so these things are for sure for sure for sure portable and y even even you can go into the you can go in complete forest off the road um you just take two small uh two smaller machines um who lift up the container on both sides yep. um and now you have like you know two vehicles uh, maneuvering and a extremely tight turning radius Right, so you can easily navigate through trees. Right, it will take you time. Yes, it will for sure be more expensive, but it is possible. Right, right. And done within a couple of hours. Um, so this is very powerful. Um, and you know, combining that for animals is great. I mean, sure, for you know, if you want to move your lamp uh, every couple of years when you move these places, sure. But just imagine even more so a shipping container or just you know a small box basically uh, on wheels um, for for your chicken. Right. All of a sudden, you have a portable chicken coop, uh, mm -hmm. which is very, very interesting right? because you will want uh, to let the chicken work the ground for a bit and make it a mess right? and then move the chicken to a different place, potentially plant seeds into the, into, uh, into the hacked earth. Um, uh, it's, it's a very nice, very nice way, actually, to keep a couple chicken. Um, so to have that portable, you know, it works on the small scale of chicken. It works on the medium scale of a small dwelling place and on the large scale of a, of a huge citadel uh, based on hundreds of thousands of containers. 
Right, right, yes, and and, and that's I've I've been thinking about that especially a, a, a lot, especially um, this year, um, because I I eat a lot of meat, obviously, and um, I cannot be relying upon a grocery store, um, and I don't want to be, um, because you know the the meats, uh, you know, obviously not as good as the, the stuff I'm raising out here, um, so like I've I've thought I've thought about uh, um, about the I guess the mobility aspect, and that is kind of kind of one of the downsides is you're you're, you're relegated to obviously if you're living in a van, you're releg- you have less space than you know. If you live on a homestead, um, there are benefits, benefits and drawbacks to everything. Um, so like the, but it, there are ways, like I, I, there are conceivably ways that you could, um, that you could, um, you know, have some food self-sufficiency on the road. And as, as you said, like a, a, a shipping container, um, if you just, if, if that's basically the home, you convert, you know, I don't know, a third of that to, as, as we were talking about, uh, you know, the chickens and, and maybe, um, you know, a, a small garden or something, I don't know. Um, that's I I think that's uh, that's that's definitely a good start. Um, it's definitely a really good start. Yeah, no and, then, and, then, and then and then you also and then you also consider you you mentioned that farm outside of Prague and um there's uh, there's uh, you know the Freedom Cells website so there's Freedom Cells all over the place there's um you know um, there's Pasnia here people can come um you know next year hopefully um, they can come here for some uh, some black market meats and um. I don't know. You know, that's, that's kind of, it's, it's, that's, it's a lot of people are, uh, the point is a lot of people are fleeing the cities and, uh, you know, trying to get land and raising, raising animals and such. So, um, that's, a, a, that's a, another, I, I guess, another solution too, is you, you don't have to be self-sufficient. Um, if we, we build up our, uh, you know, our underground, uh, our, just, just have our underground markets include, uh, you know, instead of, uh, I don't know, Bitcoin and drugs, just include food in that too. Um, just stop being aligned upon grocery stores. Yes. Yeah, you know, so so this is an interesting dichotomy that I've thought about for a while, right? Um, because you know, of course, self sufficiency is good, right? Um, but also division of labor is good. Um, and the point of view that I've come to see it is that my end goal is individual sovereignty, right? I want to manifest my will according to my own choosing, and I want to shape the world uh, and and my property uh, in the way that I see fit, without any other third party meddling mm-hmm. with it against my will. Um, so th- this means. Um, of course, you know, if the, the best way to do this is to not rely on anyone else, right? If you if you never interact with anyone else, then nobody can fuck with you because there is nobody. Right? So right. if you're a completely isolated, a private individual, um, then you are sovereign to a huge extent already, right? Because at least there is no outside force that can come and fuck with you. But the problem is you're incredibly inefficient. Right. Mm-hmm. If you really want to produce a pencil by yourself, well, good luck. Right. <laughs> Leonard Reed wrote to you in I pencil why this is a pretty bad idea. Okay. <laughs> so you will want to work with other individuals and collaborate with them um, just alone to share ideas. I mean, just to have a good conversation is super, super valuable. Right. It, it, it helps you to understand the world a bit better and it helps you to find new technologies, new ways to uh, to solve your problems more efficiently. Right. So just for that aspect, just to get some information from others, it's already cool, but even better. Right. You can collaborate with others and hire them to do a job for you. Right? You can be part of the division of labor. If someone else is marginally better at doing something than you are, right, um, then you should outsource it. Right. If uh, uh, and this will be more efficient for you. Um, however, again, we come into the conundrum that as soon as we work with other individuals, we run the risk of working with thieves. Right? And uh, and of harassers who will t- who will steal our property. So one of the very very important parts is with whom do you work with? Right? Who are the individuals that you surround yourself with? What is, what is the army of peers right, that is fighting for uh, for the same cause as you? Um, or do you have just a bunch of bureaucrats who are backstabbing you uh, as your friends in close circle? Right? That will that will affect you a lot, and that will affect your sovereignty a lot. Um, so it's kind of a, a a mix of both, right? To produce more yourself means you rely less on others, which means you're more sovereign. However, you also lose the, the benefit of division of labor, right? So for certain tasks, for sure, you want to outsource to others. I mean, obviously, you're not going to produce a computer all by yourself. Right? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're 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 exactly right. You're exactly right, and it, it comes down to, to to that question of you know how how do you how do you choose the people that you work with, and it's uh um you know it's that that question of vetting the question that question of security culture, and um yeah that's that's really that's really the I guess the 
the, the answer to that question uh, will determine, I guess, uh, determine your outcome um, of, of working with others. Um, like uh, Kyle's talked about it before in, in, in podcasts. Uh, Kyle Rudin, who, uh, you know, for a new audience, they don't even know, really, they might not know who Kyle is if they haven't gone back through the archives. But no, um, o- yeah, OG Kyle. of the show, <laughs> man, you, you can check yeah. out the early episodes. Yeah, like like he, he's had really bad experiences working with people. Um, uh, he, yeah, he, he's had really bad experiences personally. Um, and um but i i haven't uh so it, it it comes down to to experience and perspective and uh and and also to um yeah i guess just, anyway anyway yeah it's a question of vetting and security culture and and uh, there are ways to do it um there there are ways to do it um and in this day and age you just have to be creative and um yeah just make sure make sure to study up on security culture and uh yeah, Bitcoin privacy, all that good stuff. On that, on that note, uh, you uh, you're still working with uh, Wasabi Wallet. Um, you want to give us an update on 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 all the happenings there, and and I guess uh, the happenings with uh, with with I guess updates with Bitcoin that we that uh, people might not be uh, familiar with. Uh, yeah, sure. Wasabi Wallet has been uh, has been a project that really has like it, it has impressed me from day one like i've been an enthusiast user and contributor really since the early days back when it was called hidden wallet it was already beautiful back then but to see what we've built in the last two three years and especially the progress the last couple months um and what we're working towards with the next release the second version of wasabi wallet uh, 2.0 um it's like so many awesome things are coming together I'm like, I, it is so difficult for me to contain my bullish excitement for Bitcoin and specifically Bitcoin privacy. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's really hard to stay calm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you're, and you're still, you're still primarily, prim- or primarily living off of, off of Bitcoin too, right? Um, that was, uh, I guess the, the topic of our second, our, our last conversation. So, um, people can go check, go, go check that out. But, uh, um, I guess, do, do you want to talk a little bit about, uh, I guess, uh, your experiences living on Bitcoin through this, uh, um, through this, what I'll call a scamdemic? Um, you want to, you want to talk a li- little bit about, uh, about, about, uh, those experiences and, and I guess the, the Van Nomadism aspect too, you've been traveling through Europe, um, through all of this, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, to all parts, um, th- I have, you know, you know, I, I've realized that the shit is going to hit the fan, um, a long time ago. And I've been slowly but surely preparing a, a weapon arsenal uh, to protect myself against this. Um, and uh, of course, Bitcoin is a huge a- aspect of this. Um, like, I'm, yeah, it's like I'm, I'm an entrepreneur by heart. I mean, I love what I'm doing, right? I love helping people fix their problems. Man, that's such a rewarding work. And right? so I want to be honored for that work too. Right? I, I want to be rewarded for the value that I bring to others. I want them to show me that they actually value me, right? I want them to prove it. Um, and, you know, frankly, getting paid in fiat shit coins is an insult. <laughs> it's like, it's the deepest of insults. It's like, your work was so shitty. I'm going to give you this crappy debt to some trusted third party in some corrupt mafia system. <laughs> and it's leveraged to the, ex- at the ex- a degree. Nobody knows how much they're printing. <laughs> but here, yeah. take it, right? That's like throwing shit in my face. Like, get out of here. Right? That's an insult. <laughs> and, you know, g- getting paid in Bitcoin is the complete opposite, right? It's like, I mean, so it's what, insane. That, so, Satoshi's think per about hour? it. Yeah, that's, I mean, th- seriously, think about that, man. I provide such a value to my customers so much positive impact on their lives that they are willing to part with their magical precious cyberspace money i mean that's ridiculous like bitcoin is the most valuable thing that we've like the most useful and powerful and unique creative magical tool that we've ever built and people are willing to give that to me and sacrifice it themselves they will no longer enjoy that bitcoin i mean that's that's like saying you're you're a hero you're you've been incredibly awesome to me you've you've solved you've helped me so much that huge problem that i had is solved here you actually get something that i value a lot like i value bitcoin fucking lot right but i i pay it to people who provide the service that is even more valuable to me 
than Bitcoin. Like that is, that is the most beautiful compliment that an entrepreneur can get. <laughs> so um, just that alone, right? That positive impact in, in my life um, to, to actually get recognized for the work that I do on an honest level with honest money, um, that has helped me tremendously just for my mental strength. I right, to to get through this entire shit show laughing, right? Because as the entire world is going to shit, at least I have more Bitcoin. I mean, that's that's one good outcome, right? That's something that I've built for myself. I have more capital. I have more opportunities in the future, right? I'm less uncertain about the future. Um, this so so just that aspect, right? To to earn Bitcoin in times of such great uncertainty is beautiful. Because holding more money means that you are hedged against an uncertain future. Uh, you can sleep better because you know that in the future, whatever happens, at least you have money and you can buy yourself something, right? Some solution to your problems. Yeah, and and, and the fact that you've 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 got uh, some sort of financial financial security in these times, um, with uh, uh, yeah, with yeah, with with all that's going on. Um, there, there's something to be said for that. Uh, there's certainly something to be said for that. And that, that's kind of where, um, I, I guess, uh, like pretty much me, me is, uh, so I obviously, I, I obviously like, uh, we accept Bitcoin at LA publications and donations and, and, and such. Um, but, uh, um, but at the same time, that's, that's how like my, my lambs are for me is like once, once I, uh, like the, those lambs can turn into anything that I need them to turn into. Right. Um, but they can, they can turn into anything. So, um, they're, there's, they're as good as Bitcoin to me. Um, <laughs> but, but at both, both, both good and both, both, both useful, of course. Um, but, uh, I'm, I'm right there with you, right there with you. Um, do you, do you want to speak to, uh, I guess, uh, any of the, uh, have, have you, have you had any, uh, challenges? Um, has anyone tried to, uh, infringe upon your, your, uh, I guess your freedom of movement, um, as you've been, uh, been traveling around Europe, uh, through, through any of these, uh, through, I guess, through, through all this? Yeah, that um, that really has been an issue, right? Because I mean, the, the the fascism in Europe has has strapped up quite a lot uh, to an extent that borders are completely surveilled uh, and extremely restricted. Um, so there is no longer uh, Schengen zones with free travel. No, no, uh, not in an emergency situation uh, <laughs> like a cough virus. Um, so, so yeah, it's it's been quite fun. Um, so the the issue is right as being a perpetual traveler. Um, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not in the country that I'm a citizen in, right? And that's an issue because the border crossings are, um, are, uh, that is, are decided based on citizenship, right? Um, so I don't know if I am in Hungary, right? Uh, and I want to go to Slovakia, uh, but I am a British citizen, right? um, then what reason do I have to be in Slovakia? Uh, I don't live there, right? Uh, I'm not a citizen there. So I need to get some special reason to come here. Um, mm. You know, even as far as, uh, you know, we wanted to get Paul Rosenberg um, from uh, America to Prague for the Hackers' Congress. Um, but <laughs> finally, um, it, it was a requirement at that time for American citizens uh, to be invited with an urgent request by a government official uh, stating that this individual is, is essential uh, to, to the cause of the Czech government uh, and, and he has urgent business in Czechia. Um, now I, I just frank, uh, I just frankly don't understand why why the government would not give Paul Rosenberg <laughs> that that kind of letter because clearly he's doing an essential task. Uh, for clearly, the Czech he's government. an essential worker. <laughs> Absolutely right. <laughs> but unfortunately, he did not get such letter and could not travel. Right, so it's been a huge, huge, yeah, huge that's, issue. That's that's um, that's crazy, man. That that sucks because I was I I, I had you know like I, I was hoping at some point you know maybe twenty twenty one it was hopefully hopefully going to be that year that I actually you know make it out to uh, to Prague to hackers to to hackers Congress and parallel to Polis to check that place out um, because that's you know something on my bucket list I got to do it at some point. And then there was some some other traveling I wanted to do. Um, you know, over, you know, um, over, over in Europe and, and, and such. So like that's, that's going to be difficult now, I think. Um, cause I, I don't see any of this stuff rever reversing. So I don't know. That's just kind of my, my little, com my little yeah. complaint right now is that, you know, it's, 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 you know, th that's the world we live in now. Like we're, we're at this point where international travel is not, I mean, there's, there's not, it's, it's, it's not going to exist in the fashion that it did before. Like, um, it's unfortunate. Yes, Exactly. Um, but but there's still one nice aspect, um, and that is that you can very easily plan um, in what area you want to be during such a shit show, right? Um, so, for example, uh, like in early early 
2020, like January, February, uh, I was in Hungary in the Wasabi Wallet offices uh, doing some Wabi Sabi research uh, for, for this new CoinJoin algorithm that we're soon to release with Wasabi Wallet 2.0. Um, and, you know, uh, Adam Fiskornovaparo was very early in, in watching the Corona stuff happening uh, and, uh, and like being curious about it. Uh, and so he already back then told me, yeah, this is going to be a shit show. Uh, they're going to make a huge drama out of this. Uh, so better be prepared. I was like, well, Hungary is for sure not the place to be like, with a fascist dictator in place uh, spreading um, anti, uh, you know, uh, like anti foreigner uh, propaganda. That's not a good place to be as a foreigner. Um, so back then I decided uh, to go to Switzerland. Right. So I could simply pack up everything that I owned. Right. And travel within a day to Switzerland. Uh, because I thought that this would be, you know, a bastion of, of individual freedom and, and private property still being respected. Um, you know, but on a fun note, uh, it turns out that Switzerland was, for me, one of the worst places to be. Um, and a metric that I could figure this out with was the mean time to harassment metric that Ray was so beautifully outlined um, in, uh, in his books, right? So mm -hmm. my mean time to harassment increased exponentially when I was in, in Switzerland uh, to a drastic extent. Um, and the reason for, for this was snitches. People were snitching on me, parking somewhere in the forest. Right? where it was completely legal to park, but where it was just odd that a truck was standing there right? during night. Um, so uh, they simply called the cops. Um, and I had multiple cop encounters, um, 10, 20, uh, 10, 15, roughly, uh, over the course of one or two months, um, where at, at, you know, crazy times, um, both at like 11 p.m. at night, uh, as well as at uh, 5 p.m. in the morning, Right, uh, getting uh, knocked on the door and people trying to rip up, uh, rip open the closed door, uh, like completely crazy. Right, uh, so I realized very soon that Switzerland was really not a secure place to live in, um, specifically uh, for a van dweller, uh, and specifically with this level of snitching culture. Um, like even when standing on private property with explicit agreement of the owner and a, and the sign right in the windshield that uh, that you have permission to stand on this private property, still getting the police called and the police actually trespassing on the private property to come and check on you <laughs> without probable cause uh, or anything, right? Um, uh, it's like ridiculous. Um, and this is precisely the reason why I am no longer in Switzerland. Right, um, uh, and the beautiful thing is, again, I could pack up all my things and leave to a more freer place where I have not been harassed by cops since. Right, right, yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's 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 obviously you know the being being a band no matter I guess just being a perpetual travel and traveler in general at this time, um, you know, comes with its comes with its challenges, but comes with its, with its advantages too. But um, it just comes with, comes with planning, and if that's the lifestyle that you live, then obviously like it's not going to be anything. It's not going to be any different. You're just playing you're like the the variables, the the variables and the factors might change, and and your your list of places might have gone from you know twenty four down to like three or four. Um, so, um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's it's yeah, well, it, yeah. they good. I, I mean, even in this case, it might come down to three or four countries, right? But still, within these regions, you have a huge place to travel, right? Uh, and that's right. still these are, the huge These are countries. Um, yeah, these are these are countries, right? Yeah, so we're not talking. Yeah, we're, we're yeah, big places for sure. Yeah, yeah, um, but but definitely, it's it's something to consider, right? If if your lifestyle relies on freedom of movement, well, welcome to the twenty twenties, uh, where the fascists haven't taken over and put a gun to your head if you leave your house. <laughs> So unfortunately, um, freedom of travel no longer exists. Uh, so adapt your strategy um, or at least find a way to circumvent the coercion uh, and, and still find ways to travel freely, which is for sure possible. Uh, I mean, uh, it just has to be done uh, with care. Right. Right. And, and, and certainly, uh, you know, uh, living on private property on a homestead comes with its own challenges during, during this time, too. So, um, I mean, it's, it's, uh, pe people will, uh, will find ways to, especially folks in the survival society, they will always find endless reasons not to do something, um, not to pursue liberation. So um, <laughs> um, there's, there, there's, yes. always, there's always, there's always, there's always ways to, there's always ways to make yourself more invulnerable to coercion. 
Yeah, exactly. Right. And and in this case where you have a homestead, just imagine, imagine the same story from earlier from Switzerland, right? Your neighbors are snitches and they call the cops on you for anything, right? You turn up the music too loud, the cops are coming, right? <laughs> you, you meet two friends in the backyard during lockdown and you're not supposed to and you're not wearing masks, right? And they call the cops on you. Well, what do you do? Right? Do you start a war with your neighbor? <laughs> um, like it's very, very difficult. You cannot leave, right? You're landlocked. Um, so right. back to what I did in Switzerland, I was traveling to two or three places every day. Um, like I woke up, traveled to a new place, stayed for the day, traveled again, slept for the night and woke up in the next morning to drive again. Like I was basically on the run from the cops, <laughs> despite doing nothing illegal. <laughs> it, it was quite hilarious. Um, but of course, you know, it, it was stressful for sure. Um, but still, I had the option to still travel uh, and and to de-escalate quickly. Mm -hmm. Which, if you're if you have a homestead on, on and the house built on the ground, it's very very difficult. Yep. Yep, that is that is certainly true. That is certainly true. And 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 mobility, uh, you know, that's Rayo preferred mobility. And I just I just published uh, the third, um, just released a, just a, an audio article or audio version of a podcast, or I guess a podcast version. But uh, my third series, uh, third article in my uh, sur uh, surveying the second realm series. And yeah, I talked about uh, talked about that a little uh, a little bit in there. Um, but uh, that's 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 interesting. I'm, I'm I'm glad we we got to talk about that because I I I'd, I'd heard from or, or I'm not going to mention mention names here just because um, just just for for the sake of it. But I saw someone who was who, who yeah perpetually travels international travel and they they were talking about uh, this would this this would have been like a couple months ago. Um, there were like they they had like probably two choices on countries that they could go to um from their from their citizenship where they were you know where their where their citizenship was um so like it got it got really rough um for some folks but that but that that person didn't have a van um they were reliant upon um you know airplanes for travel too which um like i i, I would even like I, I would even foresee like um um yeah van nomadism wouldn't be uh yeah i don't think it'd be too difficult too 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 much di or too too much trouble now um, here in, in in the states, and then as far as far as crossing borders too, I think you can still do that pretty easily in a van. Um, you know, like going through, going at least going to I, Mexico. I I would say that crossing borders will always be more harassed on airplane uh, compared to, uh, to via right. a car. Um, I would say so, uh, just because the whole air airplane industry is lined out for mass surveillance and mass harassment, and they've scaled it decently well. <laughs> um, and uh, if, thankfully, they have not done that uh, for, for the car uh, industry <laughs> thus far, at least for border crossings. But I mean, we see it already, right? They started with mandatory masks, right? You have to wear a mask in order to be on the airplane or to cross a border. Right? You even had to put on a mask when you were in the car at the, at the border check to show your passport. Right. Um, then eventually they made it mandatory to have a, a you know, a, a privileged cost uh, to go to that country, an important thing to do, whatever the fuck that meant, according to the local <laughs> bureaucracy. Right. That, and now they are enforcing tests. Right. So now you have to get tested and prove yourself that you are innocent and that you do not have the evil virus in you uh, that is killing all the babies. <laughs> um, and this is another enforcement that is already here. Right. And very soon, most likely, uh, they are going to force the, uh, the, the vaccine as well. Right. Uh, so all uh, the, the perceived freedoms that the slave has, including the, the freedom of travel of the citizen slave, um, is now clearly shown to be non-existent uh, because, again, you have to beg for permission and follow the orders of wear a mask, uh, have a special cause uh, to leave the Soviet Union, uh, and you get a background check before you get the permission to leave. Um, and at least two of your family members have to stay behind. Uh, but of course, you have to uh, get the test uh, that you're uh, completely healthy. And naturally, we have to make sure that you got all the vaccines. Right? Uh, nanochips uh, will come next. Right? But, so that's the thing. Um, these enforcements of all these fascist totalitarian uh, regimes will come uh, at border crossings. Um, of course, on many other places as well. Um, but border crossings will be one of them. Yeah. Yeah, that it's uh yeah, that's that's definitely true. It's definitely true. Um it'll certainly be an interesting next uh next year or two. Um and it will next year or two, next few months, um, at that. Um there's still the uh I guess the, the, the carnival side sideshow circus that people are still waiting um waiting for results on. Um and uh Yeah, that, is, yeah, that, that will hilarious. that will that will be manip manipulated into some sort of frenzy. We don't even know what that's gonna turn out to be yet, but um and we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, right? 
you know, this was this was really one of the things that I was so glad about. Um, I paid zero attention to the election, um, <laughs> and that was so like, yeah, it's such a non-issue. Seriously, um, I mean, let let these bastards do in their kindergarten what they want. Let the play theaters, um, but really, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. It was pre- pre- pretty much in March or April, whenever the world locked down. Um, it was basically like, yeah, okay, yeah, the the new world order is here. Um, you're like, uh, <laughs> uh, and then and then recently, like you you had uh, you know, uh, it's, anyway, anyway, kind of kind of sarcasm, but 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 not really, um, not really. Um, <laughs> so it's it's certainly gotten gotten that uh, that that ridiculous. But um, I guess uh, let me check D Live again and see if have any uh i know there was a one or, there's a, a couple people in there at one point um stream still stable no drop frames at all um which is significantly better than youtube than fast has been at, at, at times so um <laughs> good deal good deal uh, the the test is uh is going going well so far um i guess uh was there um was there anything uh, in particular that's that's been on your mind that's uh, that you wanted to to to, ch- to, uh, to chat about? Uh, there there's pr- there's one thing uh, one thing I noticed on your website that I wanted to bring up, but um, it's uh, it's it's yeah not not necessarily pertaining directly um, to to freedom strategy and such. So was there anything you wanted to, to talk about uh, maybe in that regard or via nomadism or perpetual traveling or Bitcoin or anything anything of that nature? Yeah, you know, um, just something to grab from my from my recent experience, uh, because I have been re- rebuilding my citadel, um, and it, this has just given me another cause to think about um, some ways uh, to again reduce my mean time to harassment, uh, and uh, it might be v- valuable to share that. Um, sure. So, because one of the one of the big issues is uh, heating. How do you heat your box? Right. It's easy when your box is landlocked and and you have big electricity power or you have some big gas storage and so on. Right. Um, But how do you do it? Do it in a in a small uh, box, right? In a small container or small truck. Um, And here there are multiple different options um, that that I've considered. Uh, And you know, initially I did not have any real heating system installed in my truck. It it was nothing. Um, So I just had candles Uh, and even. Four or five candles do make a substantial difference <laughs> if, if for heating a, a rather small box uh, together with your body heat. Um, so, you know, even when it was minus 10, 20 degrees outside, um, it uh, got less miserable <laughs> when you had a couple candles. Uh, let's call it that. Um, uh, so, of, of course, not really that optimal. Uh, so I, I went through other uh, ways to do it. And, of course, uh, initially I went with a wooden fireplace. Um, which I mean, it's just ballers to have in the truck, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it gives the most cozy warmth, right? A beautiful sound, um, dry heat, which is very, very useful uh, because uh, a small uh, box will get uh, humid, uh, and you will have an issue with humidity. Um, uh, so good to have a dry heating source, um, and this was for me wood, um, beautiful. You know, the the fuel is rather efficient, plus you can get it anywhere. I mean, wood is all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, But one of the main downsides, specifically, again, for mean time to harassment, um, is the smoke, right? Uh, You will have a a fire smoke, right? Something burning uh, being released, and that will be visible. Um, And again, uh, one of the stories from Switzerland, uh, where uh, I was parked in the middle of nowhere, uh, in the forest, uh, on a official parking lot, um, and I had my fireplace going right um, at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, and people, again, called the cops on me um, because something was burning in that car. Right. So, again, this is something to consider specifically right. when you are trying to be stealth in a city. Right. You're not going to light a fire in the city. <laughs> Seriously. Um, I mean, you're going to get the, the, the fire brigade called on you in, in no time, probably. Um, uh, so that is a big issue. Um, Another issue with it actually is, you know, just convenience, um, because if you want to have a constant heat throughout the night, you will have to get up uh, from bed uh, two or three times per night mm-hmm. and refill the fireplace. Um, if you don't, you wake up and it's freezing, right? There may be some colds left, um, but it will be cold. Uh, so not really that convenient if you don't want to wake up uh, near zero degrees Celsius. <laughs> so... Um, 
Uh, yeah, th these are just some things to consider. So recently, that's why I bring it up, um, I added a propane system to my truck, um, which uh, so far I've been hesitant, uh, just, you know, for one reason, security. Um, if the propane leaks while I'm sleeping, uh, that's that's an issue, of course. Um, uh, so I fixed that with multiple security sensors and crash sensors. Uh, if any car crashes into my truck, even while it's standing, uh, the gas will be turned off, uh, which is nice. Um, uh, and you know other security measures, good uh, steel tubes, um, uh, and and so on. Um, uh, and one of the benefits of this is, as, so it does have external air intake, meaning your oxygen inside the box will not get depleted, which is an issue with wooden fireplace. You have to open a window, otherwise you're gonna uh, run out of oxygen soon and get a headache. Um, so here you have external air intake as well as external exhaust outtake. Um, and this exhaust is basically hot air and water vapor, okay? Um, so it is not smoke, but it is water vapor. Um, and in some conditions, this can be seen. Uh, so especially when, you, when it's cold and you start it, uh, the, the warm water vapor will become mist and you will see a mist cloud coming out, but it's not smoke. Um, uh, so, so that is quite a benefit. Um, and you know, further, you can keep it running through, uh, throughout the night. Uh, so you have a constant and stable heat uh, throughout the night, uh, which is, of course, much more comfy uh, and less maintenance work than constantly shoveling up on wood. Um, so yeah, these were some some of the considerations because it's really a, a interesting question on on how to heat um, your your mobile uh, dwelling place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's certainly interesting. Certainly interesting. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Appreciate that. And I was I was thinking about uh, I mentioned mentioned a, a little bit ago that uh, I will be uh, replacing this uh, this house this house possibly a couple of shipping containers. We'll see. But um, the guy did um, like uh, and and the goal is to eventually be off grid. Um, and the good thing is um, that for part of the I guess for part of the house is run on propane already. There's a big propane tank out back. So well, I would be well, I am dependent upon you know like a delivery. Uh, like a propane delivery, it's like twice a year um, that I, that I, that I require that delivery, um, and then the rest of the, the rest of the year, like that that runs. I think it runs the heat and the stove and maybe something else. Like the the, the electric bill is nothing because um, there's yeah there's there's hardly anything on it. So um, that's I, I I am I am I am glad that uh, um, you mentioned the propane thing because I, I will be one step. I get I, I probably will keep that uh, keep that system um, as a, as a backup. And yeah, you know solar. It, it, Solar is great for electricity. I mean, I've been running, like generating my own electricity for, for over a year now um, on, on this truck and it's, it works great. Um, one of the things I upgraded, I went from 400 watts to 600 watts, um, plus a stronger inverter and now two fridges. Uh, so that's a luxury, one fridge, one freezer. Um, mm. That's really cool as well. More storage for meat, right? Uh, <laughs> a lot of canned meat, a lot of frozen meat, a lot of cooled meat in the fridge. Uh, that's That's a good combination um but yeah having a good solar and battery system is really 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 useful um i mean you're not seriously gonna rely on the government electricity grid i mean come on <laughs> that shit is so fragile uh, stay away from it as far as possible uh, so sure get yourself some solar get yourself some good agm batteries um and and that will uh, you know keep you running basically forever i mean really a thousand watt will will keep a, a family household going um and it's 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 really cheap, um, so so for sure worth to consider. Right, and, and and as you're talking about with your van, you're talking about a small space. I'm I'm obviously going more towards the minimalist approach. Not going to be like 250 square feet. Going to be probably be more like seven 500 to 750. Um, but still, um, I'll design it with, um, you know, with I, I guess as efficient you know heating and cooling as possible. Um, one idea that um, I, I talked with uh, Sophia Smallstorm. Um, I think it was the last episode of the podcast I released, the last uh, interview of the podcast I released. But uh, um, I guess it would be it would be considered a geothermal system. Um, but you uh, you put a fan, uh, you put a hose, and then basically a fan um, uh, underneath the, underneath the ground, and then you just you port you port that up into the house. And um, yeah, it works works well for it gives you a, I guess a baseline temperature probably uh, during the winter of like 55, and then maybe a baseline temperature of like 65. Or I guess maybe maybe um, it, it might uh, you know it, it, I, anyway it, it's there's 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 a lot of ways there's a lot of ways and one thing I've noticed is that I've I've been talking to some folks some some folks I guess that'd be considered you know normies from the survival society and um, it's just like 
<clears throat> there's so many there's so many like ways that you can make yourself resilient and off grid um like really efficient systems um like that you can pretty much build build like at low cost for yourself like a rain a rainwater collection system instead of the gutters just pouring the water out into the gra- out into the grass just have it go have it poured into a tank for Christ's sakes like um these like these things aren't aren't complicated but like it's the there's it's that 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 uh, serve all society like government government indoctrination like um, you, you can only think inside these parameters, but there, there are so many ways. And this is what I want to, what I want to express to, to folks who, um, who, who may be tuning in live or, you know, I guess after the fact too, is, um, you know, really just, just, you know, just, just think the, 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 there's the, the only, the only, only limitation on, on these things is, is your creativity. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. And, and my rant, turn it over to you if you have anything. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, it's it's really all about that. And you know, I, I think specifically shipping containers um, really really allow for that um, because it is well, you know, it's it's basically just a box, <laughs> right? So it's 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 big and it's empty, uh, and there's a lot of things that you can do inside of it. Um, and you know, the, the the same box can be used uh, for a workshop with your tools and welder and and saws and cutters and whatnot. Um, or for a, a, a farm, you know, to to carry your your lambs and your and your chicken, um, or for your family dwelling place, right, where you raise your, your kids, uh, or your office working space, uh, or a completely surveillance resistant um, uh, and uh, uh, surveillance resistant container uh, that you use to do your business in, right. Um, there are multiple ways that you can do this. So the creativity really is is very out in the open. Uh, and again, it's a modular system. Um, and, and you can build out one of these uh, containers as is, right? Uh, and when you run out of space, you know, when that minimalist approach uh, gets too minimalist for you, um, when you need more get storage, another storage, basically, storage container. Uh, for your or capital. Get, get another container. Why not? <laughs> get, get another box. Exactly. Yeah. Just another waterproof box. That's it. <laughs> build a couple shelves, build a couple tables and, and you can put, st- you can put uh, stuff on other stuff. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. But yeah, for sure. The, the opportunities are out there. Um, you know, one thing specifically for the construction that I would still like to mention mm-hmm. um, is, so if you're inside a container, if you stand there a bit, like the, the air is, is, you know, sticky. Um, if there are no windows, like it's, it's, you know, it's a solid box, so it's going to be musky inside, uh, let's say. Um, right. So plus dark, obviously. Um, so for many cases, this is okay. Like if it's just plain storage or a workshop, or if you want to build it into some surveillance resistant box, uh, whatever, then sure. Um, but in many cases, you will want to cut into the container um, and make windows, make doors uh, and other things. Um, so uh, this is, uh, and for here, some considerations. Um, first, I would not cut the ends of it, right? the, the small cube parts uh, on, on the end of the long box. Um, the, 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 the one front is the door, of course, uh, so never cut anything in the door. Um, and the, the back part, um, uh, like, uh, it, it can be cut as well. Uh, like the, the back solid pl- uh, plate can be cut. Um, what I was even thinking, cut the entire two by three meters or what, what it is um, and put one entire glass panel uh, on this side. Um, uh, oh, no, wait, wait uh, sorry. Sorry, I'm, I explained why. I'm, I mean, on, on the side of the door, um, put a large glass panel um, that is inside the box. Uh, so when you close the door, uh, the window is actually hidden, right? Um, but when you open the door, you will have a huge glass window um, that cannot be opened itself, uh, but that is just a glass panel that will let in a lot of light mm-hmm. and, for example, a beautiful place to put your bed. Right? Um, do not cut the ceiling, if possible. This is one of the, the most crucial spots that holds the entire skeleton of the, of the thing together, specifically when lifting it. So if you plan to lift and to carry uh, your container, I would very much suggest to consider cutting in the hole. And if you do, put a lot of steel reinforcement. Um, that is in general. Wherever you cut, reinforce with solid steel, um, like cast iron steel, uh, uh, in, uh, um, before. So this will mean, first of all, the cutting is a pain in the ass. If you have a regular grinder cutter, you're gonna, it's going to be so difficult to make a straight cut through the two or three millimeter steel. Like it's very solid. You're going to run through so many grinders, um, like these flex grinders, 
uh, and the cut will not be straight. Um, so if possible, get a plasma cutter. Um, with a plasma cutter and a rig, you can actually cut a nice solid line, a like straight line, um, with a clean edge. Um, uh, that is that is going to be super, super useful. Of course, plasma cutters are more expensive. Uh, so if you're only building one container, then probably hire someone to do it. But if you're building multiple, uh, consider investing in, in that tool. Um, and then, of course, you will need to do a lot of welding, a lot of welding, uh, a lot of solid steel reinforcements wherever you cut, um, uh, just because otherwise it will not be um, solid. So if you cut, you will need to ha have to reinforce after every two meters, roughly. Um, so you can leave, for example, a two to three meters should be left on the sides of the um, of the. Uh, the, the sides of the uh, container, like the early parts, uh, because again, the closer you get to the edges, uh, the more critical is the stability of the container. Um, so leave roughly two to three meters uncut, then put the solar steel pillar, and then you can have maybe a two meter wide window, right? Um, until the next solid steel beam has to come to, to be the support. Um, which means, you know, if you have a, a, a 12 meter container, um, you can have two or even three pretty big uh, windows in this container, as well as, for example, you know, a door um, and so on. Um, so, it, you know, that's that's just one thing to to consider. Again, probably you will want to cut the container just for livability and for convenience. If, if you do so, consider that it will reduce the transportability. You will no longer be able to put that container on a ship, right? It It will sink, so you're actually not allowed to put it on a ship. Um, you can still transport it via a crane and truck, but you have to reinforce every cut very, very well. Otherwise, the whole container will crumble as soon as you lift it. Um, so that's just some important tips uh, for uh, for building your own truck, uh, container. Yes, yes, that's that's very good, very good uh, stuff. I will certainly keep in mind and. Yeah, good stuff uh, for the audience too. Those are yeah, I mean, shipping container houses are they're, they're they're popular now, and I think they'll 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 only continue to be. And I guess just just another option um, that I guess people might might not think of that might might not think of. And in terms of mobility, um, or I guess that they're so cheap that you you might just, uh, regardless they're they're easy to move if you wanted to. Um, but like they they have some pretty big uh, like the the like big outdoor garden sheds that people would put in like their backyards. Um, like there there are some good sized ones of those too. Um, that that you could you that 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 you could um that 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 could be a potential options. So um and and there's all there's there's also yeah. I, I don't know I, I I'm not sure if I would do this myself, but there's there, there's I, I've seen some machine shed houses around here around here too. Um, which yeah, it's just a it's a, a machine shed, but you you can again just like with a storage with a shipping container or a van, you can you can do whatever the hell you want to the interior. Um. So yeah, there's there's lots of options, um, and then there's the Earthship House, which uh, to bring up yeah. the base Mallstorm again, she she met, she mentioned that um, the yeah Earthship House, um, which would be yeah basically 100 percent custom, or I guess pretty pretty custom, um, largely custom. So uh, yeah, there's there's lots of options. There's 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 lots of options. Yeah, yeah, for sure, right. Uh, and again, uh, multiple individual uh, individual preferences will uh, lead to individual outcomes here. Um, but you know, one one nice thing to consider as well. I mean, sure, you know, individual dwelling places are cool, but let's talk about building citadels, right? Building right. An, an actual defendable homestead with multiple sovereign individuals living inside. How are you going to secure that? Physical security is going to be essential, right? So one nice thing, think about that: building a wall out of shipping containers, stacking two to three shipping containers on top of each other. That is a that is a, an unfuckwithable wall. Uh, you know, I, I tried that's, cutting through that's, these dude, that's, that's plates brilliant. Yeah, that's, with, I talked with grinder. I talked about the Great Wall of Pasnia, um, like kind of kind of kind of as a, a sarcastic idea. But um, you know, shipping containers that's not that's not totally un, un, unfeasible. Yeah, but and hypothetically speaking, no, really, you, you 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 get you get some shipping containers, and then you to apply some second realm principles, um, you can get you know automated uh, defense and uh, um, surveillance systems. Um, Precisely, on your, on your tight access control, mm -hmm. uh, and and so on. By the way, there's there's some nice ideas on doing tight access control as well. Um, you know, so so for example, for a surveillance resistant um, place, uh, you will want to have secure access 
right? You do not want to be in a room and then all of a sudden a crazy lunatic with an axe comes in and, and slaughters you, right? right? Um, so specifically because it is surveillance resistant, nobody will hear your scream, right? So, <laughs> so, you, so one of the things here on like build two doors um, that lead into separate rooms inside the container, right? Um, and both individuals step in here and can see each other. Right? and can check each other out. Uh, and then, if desired, pressing a button and entering into the room. Um, you could also, for example, do something nice, like um, y because you don't want one person just killing the other. Right? So how about, in order to open the container again, both persons have to go into the box uh, and actually press the button at the same time. Right? Yeah. Um, so, so this way, you can actually have rather secure meeting places Right, uh, where the, even with semi untrusted people, uh, you could you have some security and some access rights uh, and, and control. That yeah, that's that's uh, that's incredible. That's uh, that's some a very good very good uh, addition to uh, to some of the stuff talked about in a second round book on strategy. Love it. Um, definitely love it. Yeah. We've been we've been going. Yeah, for, you know, just for imagine an hour. having. Yeah, yeah, just imagine having a, a like a huge ring of a, a three shipping container large wall uh, where there are like two distinct access points that are in it of itself shipping containers. Uh, so the door, you know, like the, the entrance into the Citadel is a shipping container itself with uh, multiple, you know, like uh, uh, multiple layers of, uh, of entry passage and multiple ways of showing credentials uh, and so on. Um, I think that's that's going to be very very interesting. Uh, so so yeah, I think uh, we have a couple cool ideas to actually build not just you know our own unique dwelling places, uh, but also to collaborate with others in a modular way uh, to put our own property, our own shipping container, you know, in such a citadel. Uh, so I think the the future of this idea is very very bright, and I'm I'm eager to work on a couple projects that implement it. Yes, yes, um, and I mean I I really hadn't thought of um, I, I guess I. I hadn't thought of the shipping container idea as the wall. So, um, yeah, something else, something else to consider. Something else to consider. Um, yeah, short, short term, short term are birds and um, birds and, and getting off grid. And then, uh, yeah, down the road, whenever we get the the ho the, the hopeful uh, inevitable, the hopeful intentional community, um, hopefully that uh, we can we can we can talk about the the Great Wall of Pasnia. Then uh, we'll see, we'll see. But uh, anyway, we've been going for. Uh, for Looking forward to it. <laughs> Oh yeah, cer certainly uh, lots, lots, lots to look forward to. Lots of, uh, lots of interesting stuff. But uh, yeah, going for about an hour here. I'll, uh, go ahead and uh, and wrap up. I'm. Uh, it's probably about time for 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 lunch. I gotta feed my dog too, and probably probably should feed the feed the animals, uh, feed the lambs more. But uh, anyway, Max, uh, do you want to uh, I guess uh, plug any plug any uh, anything for the, for the listeners? Uh, any other closing thoughts? Uh, yeah, no, for sure. You, you gotta, uh, you gotta um, make them fat and juicy. <laughs> so, so go out and feed them. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I was very happy here to come back for the conversation. It was was fun uh, as always and as expected. Um, so, uh, thanks again, Sean, for the invite, and I'm happy to come back uh, at any time. Um, yeah, in, in the meantime, the peers can find me at uh, towardsliberty.com, uh, basically uh, Max Hillebrand uh, in cyberspace. Um, and yeah, if, if you want to uh, reach out and chat more and uh, maybe even have some custom you know, uh, questions and uh, you know, unique, uh, like uh, basically consulting on, uh, on this type of uh, freedom strategy, uh, reach me out. We can for sure set up a call and, and talk about this more. Right on. Very good. Very good. Um, all right, guys. And uh, there you have it for those uh, on DLive. I'm not sure. It said that I could only do encoding um, for live streaming, but I, I hit the save live or I guess re record the live stream um, button. So we'll see if that if that pops up there. Anyway, for for those that uh, um, for the couple that were tuned uh, tuned in, hopefully, hopefully enjoyed it. And uh, for the podcast and uh, video listeners, uh, BonniePodcast.com dot com uh, or on any of these other decentralized platforms, because yeah, as as I said in the beginning, and as was the kind of the theme of this uh, this episode, uh, yeah, we're. Uh, LA Publications, Vani, Pasnia, everything I'm doing. Um, yeah, cutting cutting first realm ties. So um, anyway, thanks uh, so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed that uh, kind of impromptu episode. Wasn't sure where uh, where we'd go with that conversation, but I'm really, really happy with uh, with the results. Um, we uh, we definitely got into some some philosophical sort of stuff and then some 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 technical um, I guess uh, some detailed stuff, a lot like uh, what what uh, um, I, I I could uh, picture Rayo um Rayo, some of Rayo, Rayo's uh you know famous diagrams from his first book talking about shipping containers I could get yeah, uh, mm, 
That'd be that'd be interesting to to get his thoughts exactly. on Exactly that 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 was the inspiration. You know, Rayo has these beautiful paragraphs where he explains in detail, you know, how to build a tent out of a two by three meter tarp, two <laughs> sticks, three meters long, right? And three meters of rope. And you tie this knot, right? And you secure it to the tree at precisely this height and it will be solid and not leak. <laughs> that was the vibe yep. that I was hoping to go for. Yep. Yep. Exactly. That's, 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 that's exactly it. Exactly it. Um, and, uh, that's, and that's necessary. If, if, if you're going to do the action part of it and the action, the action's 50% of it, right? Um, if you're going to do the action, you got to know, uh, you got to know, you got to know how to do it or you got to figure it out. And it's always, uh, um, you know, if someone else has done something, uh, you can always, uh, yeah. Why reinvent the wheel? Um, you can modify the wheel, of course, but uh, no reason to, to reinvent it. Um, so anyway, yeah, Max, thanks so much for tuning in. For folks at DLive, um, hope you enjoyed the stream. And uh, to uh, the rest of the folks, uh, Paznia.com for the Free Republic of Paznia, the Self-Liberator's Paradise. Uh, you can sign the digital constitution there. You can uh, learn more about the project. Uh, you can uh, learn about Vanufest. Uh, we had a, had a 20, 20, 25, uh, 20, 25 self-liberators out here um, last weekend in September. And uh, we're going to do the same thing next year. Uh, and since there might not be any music festivals because of uh, because of these fascist communists in the survival society, we might just have to have a little bit of a get together um, at uh, Pasnia uh, because the second realm culture um, must uh, must go on. And uh, you know, if we can uh, draw on some some other folks too to uh, self ownership and and, and uh, autonomy um, by way of uh, a music festival, an underground music festival, why not do it? So. Uh, anyway, kind of being sarcastic there. We'll we'll, we'll see. But um, anyways, thanks, guys. Um, I will uh, leave it there. Uh, until next time.